I'd like to welcome Lorena Scafaria, Taika Waititi, Casey Lemons, Destin Cretton, Charles Randolph, and Anthony McCartan. Welcome. I think it's often a combination of the actor and the character that bring excitement to uh, an audience. So that's what I think Iron Man did. It was it was Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and and I think that that was the perfect blend of of star star power and and a character. And so um, I think that's what people might turn out for more now. Is 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 that? You know, comic books and graphic novels, you know, were always kind of laughed at and, you know, in the past as not being real art or not being real stories, and it's just simply not true. And, that, you know, and, and with superheroes, they're just, it's just new mythology. So, it's, you know, I'm sure that when, you know, you know, people came up with stories about, um, you know, about Zeus or about, you know, different gods and, you know, or Hercules, you know, thousands of years ago, people were like, oh, this is not real. This is not a real story. You know, this is... This is bullshit. This guy did all this stuff, but it's actually just—it's just taking those similar things, and you know, and eventually Iron Man will enter into the—I um, mm -hmm. think—the realm of mythology, and people will say, "Oh, yeah," you know, and it's just stories. It's just all it is at the end of the day for me is stories that are either teaching you lessons mm -hmm. or you know, or helping ex us experience the human condition in different ways. Subjects that you as writers would not touch. I mean, I've seen very good good work outside of culture. Obviously, mm -hmm. I think it's if the empathy is there and the investigation, and it's you know it's it's done sincerely, and you have to have the depth of really understanding, and that means digging in, digging into the research. You know, of course, of course, but you have to be you have to really go the whole distance. You know, um, you can't toe dip. You know, so that's I think when you when you toe dip, I can feel it. You know, um, and, and when there's deep investigation, deep empathy and, and really digging into the story and the characters, then, then no, you, it's, you know, it's just a really good movie. Boiler Room when oh, I was okay. like oh, okay. 18, yeah. wow. just like doing secretarial work. But um, it was really just a off, off Wall Street, <laughs> northern right. New Jersey, a room full of phones that guys are selling bad stocks to old people. And. My mom worked there for a time. A guy said he was going to hit her in the head with a baseball bat. And wow. the bosses said, bottom line, can you keep working with him? Because he's bringing in the money and wow. you're just typing stuff into a computer. So, yeah, it was remarkable. But there was another guy who was on a headset for six months talking to nobody. He was losing his mind. Oh, wow. wow. So it was wow. really <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. I can really identify. Really <laughs> yes, exactly. What's the worst jobs you've all had to do along the way? Because most writers don't really make it till yeah. they're, you know, it's certainly in their 30s. Uh, have you all you know, so done many. tough jobs? So many sure. jobs. What? Yeah. I, in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, worked in the Pepsi plant, sh shoveling saccharin into the syrup formula. Ooh. And even three weeks after I quit that job, I could pull a piece Luxury. of Luxury. Did you I, drink I, Pepsi? Yeah, so, so sugaring the Pepsi. I worked on the night sword at UPS, which is a job where you put the packages in the trucks in order so the drivers can, can do that from one to six in the morning. It's, uh, you lose a little bit of weight because wow. you're running for That's five so hours. Wow. I've had Who else? I worked in a coal yard, um, bagging coal, 80 kilogram bags, and then wow. getting them into trucks and stuff. Mm. Dirty job. Mm -hmm. It was all right. Can't really beat mm -hmm. that. <laughs> uh, how about you? Um, I shot wedding videos. That's how I. That's how I paid the bills for a long that's time. That's pretty clean. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know. Coming. That sounds. Uh, <laughs> it was actually. Did one anybody of, ever fire you from a wedding? Uh, no, it was one of the most rewarding creative <laughs> jobs I've ever had. Um, I also worked at. at uh, a, at a group home for for teenagers, which at the time I didn't realize was going to be the inspiration for my first feature, but um, I, w I worked there as a as a counselor for for two years. Was that difficult? It was extremely difficult. Yeah, I, d I didn't realize how sheltered I was as a child growing up in Hawaii until I was I, I took that that gig. It was a it was very eye opening to kind of the the ugliness in the world. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. I'll take you it's, it's, it's a really interesting thing that I've been wrestling with and trying to make my way through, and I'd love to know what your guys' opinion about this is. When you're writing a character whose views sort of roughly align with your own, it's, it's much more effortless mm -hmm. to work on that character. Then you have to somehow write a character mm -hmm. who's, who you have no empathy for, and yet the task, we kind of have to love our characters yeah. equally. And it's a bit like, 
to have an even boxing match, they have to be in the same weight sure. division. And the question is, how do you write empathetically for someone who you don't have, you know, any instinct for? I prefer it. And maybe it's a form of self-hatred, I don't know, but, but I prefer to write people who I don't agree with. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because I can counter, I can turn the scene so many more times because I naturally have an instinct to counter their, their, their ideas. So I much prefer to write conservatives. And does it change you? Does it change your view of that person? I think, I think any time you write a human being, it, it, it does some form of, normalizing is too strong a word, but it does some form of giving you an empathetic relationship to their place mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is so helpful, even for perpetrators of misdeeds. So when